Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. So in this video, we're going to talk about the common oncology pharmacology that you need to know. So let's start with antineoplastics and with antineoplastics an example of this is methotrexate it's used for treatment for cancer as well as a, a rheumatoid arthritis cirrhosis and mucosis fungicides its mode of action it causes the death of rapidly replicating cells especially the malignant cells side effects of this include thrombocytopenia renal abnormalities hepatotoxicity anorexia alopecia diarrhea as well as nausea and vomiting nursing care for this since this patient is going through thrombocytopenia we monitor for pulmonary toxicity which is an early manifestation its early manifestation for this include a dry non-productive cough we avoid crowds with people as well as people with infections we avoid those kind of things we also place this patient should not take any ppis proton pump inhibitors and they should avoid any NSAIDs as well as because this may cause gi upsets so cisplacin is also another antineoplastic and this is used to treat various types of cancers and tumors its mode of action it causes death to rapidly replicating cells especially malignant ones okay and side effects is the same thing like thrombocytopenia leukopenia hypotoxicity reversible posterior leukocenopathy interactions it has an increased risk for nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity with other nephrotoxic and ototoxic drugs like aminoglycosides as well as dupe loop diuretics anti-tumor antibiotics so with anti-tumor antibiotics the common one that you'll see it's doxyrubicin and doxyrubicin it works in various or several phases of the cell cycle your cell has a various cycle for it to be a mature cell so this one actually works on various phases and if you hear that that makes you think that this drug is very toxic to the body so it's used for solid tumors its mode of action it binds to the dna and it inhibits dna and rna synthesis causing death to rapidly dividing cells so side effects for this is you'll have this red discoloration of body fluids. So red discoloration of tears, sweats, as well as urine. You will end up with bone marrow suppression, which signs and symptoms of this include thrombocytopenia, neutropenia, as well as anemia, GI upset, as well as alopecia. So nursing care for this will include, will monitor any signs and symptoms of inca infection because this patient is a high risk of neutropenia. Will administer a medics for nausea and vomiting, will monitor any CBC levels due to the bone marrow suppressions, will monitor for myotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, as well as cardiotoxicity. This is why this medication is very toxic. It uh, kind of affects every system in the body. So let's talk about antimyotics and vincitrincin is an example of it it's used for a variety of tumors and cancer its mode of action it stops cell division during mitosis it is a phase specific medication this is phase specific remember with doxorubicin it works in every phase right this one is phase specific medication it does not cause any bone marrow suppression which is a good thing so side effects of this include alopecia gi upset phlebitis at the IV side and peripheral neuropathy. With nursing care for this patient, we'll monitor, we'll always use our central line for infusion due to the risk for phlebitis. We'll monitor for neuropathy and signs of symptoms for this include a patient complains of pins and needle, numbness, tingling. That is how you no, a patient is undergoing neuropathy, okay? We administer antiemetic prior because it has a high risk of uh, nausea and vomiting, so to prevent the nausea and vomit. So let's talk about alkylating agent. Clinophosphamide is an example of this. 
its uses is to treat various cancers and tumors. Its mode of action, it inhibits protein synthesis by interfering with DNA and RNA synthesis. Side effects for this. So side effects for this include alopecia, hemorrhagic cystitis, bone marrow suppression, and with that we'll end up with thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, as well as anemia. And nursing care for this, we will always monitor CBC levels to, due to the bone marrow suppression, of course. We'll monitor blood in urine due to hemorrhagic cystitis. We'll increase fluid intake two to three, flush it out, right? And we'll also administer emetics due to what? Antiemetics due to nausea and vomiting. So let's talk about biologic response modifier, interferon alpha 2b. This is used for viral infection like hepatitis as well as cancers. Its mode of action is it it interferons are proteins that increase a patient's response to tumor and viruses and it decreases cancer cell production okay so it interferes with the protein and cause decrease in cell uh, cancer cells production side effects of this include psychiatric disorders cardiotoxicity bone marrow suppression flu-like symptoms like fever muscle like chills and lethargy as well as GI upset. So let's talk about medications that are used to treat breast cancer. Example of this is tomexifen, of course, use breast cancer. Mode of action, it is completed with estrogen for binding sites in the breast and it stops growth of estrogen dependent cancers. Side effects of this include increased risk of pulmonary embolism, endometrial cancer, hot flashes, GI upset, and hyperkalemia. So, and with this medication, I always think that it's interfering with estrogen. And when somebody's, you end up with like menopausal kind of signs and symptoms. And when somebody's in menopause, they always hot, right? So they complain about how being hot and also calcium has something to do with females, right? So think about the, somebody who has low calcium, but with this one, we'll end up with a hypercalcemia. So prostate cancer. With prostate cancer, the medication for this is luprolide, luprolide, okay, and it's used for prostate cancer, right? Its mode of action, it decreases the level of testosterone produced by the testes. Of course, side effects of this include decreased libido, hot flashes, gynomastitia. Gynomastitia is actually enlargement of the breast tissue and as well as bone loss. Since uh, nursing care for this patient will monitor for PSA and testosterone levels, we do the blood work. We don't do the digital before the blood work. Testosterone level throughout the therapy, we have the patient increase their calcium intake as well as vitamin D. For absorption of calcium, you need vitamin D because of the risk for bone loss. And that is it for our cancer series. See you in the next series. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next one. Bye.